Hey, happy people. Listen, um, it's 57 degrees outside, and I just got out of the water. Um, I dove uh, about three boats today, and one of them, the owner wants us to deliver it over to one of the local yards. So that's why I dove that boat. I just wanted to make sure that there was no barnacles on the propeller and that everything would be clear. Um, engine output and all of that. So we're heading downtown here, uh, downtown St. Pete, and we're gonna go to the boat and I'm gonna show you around the boat and you're coming to work with me. So let's go. And here we are, coming up on the woodland. Okay, so first thing I see when I walk up to a boat and I'm about to deliver it, how many lines do we have? We got a power cord, power cords in the dock box over here, not pedestal over here, sorry. And so uh, I'm just overlooking things. Now I dove this boat this morning. Yes, the temperature is 57 degrees. So it was cold, so we warmed up and got some warm clothes on here. Let's go over the boat here and let's see if we can get her running. So carefully, I see that there's fenders on the side here. As you board the boat, I wonder how you're gonna get on. So you put your foot on solid and you have a, a stay right here which is tuned and nice and tight. This is a Catalina 40, by the way. Uh, the owner keeps it in really nice shape. There we go. Okay, so we're down here. And we're looking around. Okay, let me show you something. I started the engines. I'm letting the boat warm up. But while I'm doing that, I'm doing my checks. I've already checked the oil. I'm checking for any water leakage. there that's just probably loose wood things are loose you know but I'm in for you can see the water sir circulating right there I'm gonna sit in this position I slowly let the boat tighten up its mooring lines that's that white one right there and the black one now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna exercise the rudder all the way all the way okay then I'm gonna count how many turns it took me to finish one one full turn two full turns and a quarter so two full turns now I know if I go one full turn my rudder is straight that's the trick you need to exercise these things right now we're in forward we're gonna let it sit for a minute while the engine still will it is warmed up but the transmission's not. Then I'm gonna put it in reverse. So watch what happens to the boat when I put it in reverse. Just closely watch that dock. I'm gonna put it in neutral and the lines will relax. You heard the click, I'm in neutral. Let the boat relax a little bit. As you can see by the bow, it's creeping over a little bit. Now I'm gonna put it in reverse. Hear that clunk? That's reverse. Now the bow lines are gonna go tight. Just like that. Now I know I have forward and I have reverse. See there? And the lines are actually tightening up evenly, keeping the boat straight because my rudder is straight. Okay, remember I dove the boat so I know it's down there. So we're gonna get that a little bit of reverse. Notice the water's not circulating anymore. It's actually going this way because I'm in reverse. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to end up backing up after I put it in neutral and untie the lines. Now, what am I going to do? I'm going to look at which way the wind's blowing. I'm looking at the top of the masts, and I see the arrows where the wind's coming out of the north. Okay, so they're coming to my stern. So what do I want to do? I could take off the bow lines, because I'm not going anywhere, because the stern lines are there. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll take off the bow lines first, now that we know which way the wind's blowing, and then as we slowly creep the boat back by hand, we'll take off the spring lines. And we'll, we'll nest those up against the polar over there where they, where they go. And then we'll take off the stern lines and then we'll be ready to go. All right. Okay, as you can see, I put it back in neutral. You heard the click. RPMs went down to 900 RPMs, which is good. And the engine temperature is still good. Let's go get some bow lines off and the power, shore power off. Okay, when you unplug shore power, you look, is there anything abnormal? No. See this blue light? That means there's power to it. You flip the breaker off, no power to it. You disconnect it and you put it on the boat. We'll take our double lines off. This guy, customer, has my heart, and here's why. When you tie a boat, I want you to tie it like this. Put that line all the way around twice, okay? Just like that. Follow me? Then you go over the top. Follow me? And then you make it nice and neat. Just like that, okay? Perfect, huh? Okay, now when the boat or a storm comes, it tightens that up, but you can still get the rope done, undone. This is the wrong way. Ready for it? How many people have you seen do this? All my instructions. Okay, we cleared the dock. We went through our checks. We undid the lines. Based on the wind, if the wind is coming from the back of your boat to the forward of your boat, you're allowed to take the bow lines off and the shore power. If it was just the opposite, I would have left those on. But today, we've got the wind coming from our stern, and uh, so we left the stern lines on. You saw the spring line being released. Um, don't forget to mark those because it's so much easier when you get back to the dock to know exactly where it needs to be. Um, anyway, we backed out slowly with the rudder straight until we got enough speed then we turned around and we steered that way okay so you take your take your helm and you would turn it in the direction of the way you want to go backwards all right so we did that then we put it in neutral to see if the engine would stall right we're still coasting backwards until we clear all hazard which is the dock telephone poles whatever it might be once we clear those poles, it's time to move the steering wheel fully in the opposite direction. This is how you turn a sailboat. You don't go forward and turn a sailboat. It, it's called prop walk. You turn that helm all the way to the opposite direction, you put it in forward, and the bow will naturally just spin around for you, okay? So keep that in mind. That's a little trick, um, but we're on our way. RPMs, that's for sure. It's like low pressure. So hey guys, as you can see, I'm not on the boat and this is the end of that little segment there.
but I didn't want to drop you. I wanted to let you know what actually happened. Um, the symptoms of fuel starvation occurred and it actually uh, stalled. And I grabbed the roller furling and opened up the roller uh, furling and uh, sailed it out into the bay until I could get my bearings. I notified the owner of the marina and let him know what happened. And he says, oh, we'll send a boat out to you, which is not a big deal, okay? It is a sailboat that I was on, so therefore I'm gonna sail it now, all right? But being alone on the boat, and this isn't a long delivery where you're out in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico, I went ahead and sailed closer to the marina, which is into the basin of the Coast Guard base. And uh, at that time, I was able to uh, roll the roller furling in, we side two, and we towed the boat to the marina safely. Um, after the boat was in the yard and the bottom paint was done, I asked Carl what was, uh, what was the problem, and he says that the fuel pump was intermittent, which goes along with what I was thinking, starvation of fuel. But now it is time to bring the boat back to the slip, and it's a lot better trip. So follow it out to the end of the movie and see what happened. And if you like this type of content, give me that thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe. Ring that bell, and watch how good I pull the boat into the slip.